What's on ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ross, I like games, and today we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at another Decepticon. We went a little while without looking at a Decepticon, we've just taken a look at Needlenose, so now we get to take a look at another Decepticon. It's Raider Nightstick, another one of them there Battle Masters, which is going to be a little mini card, making up for those like 150 sleeves I bought that I didn't need. No, it was like 300. 300 sleeves I bought that I didn't need. Now I have a use for them. It also means that it is a transformer on one side, and when it gets KO'd, it turns into an upgrade. So it is a six star, which makes it extremely cheap. Nice low cost. Of course, going along with the nice low cost, we have nice low stats. Two attack. Six health, one defense. This is half of the average character. Now, back in wave one, it's much harder to figure out now with combiners and all of that. But the average character was an eight cost with four attack, 12 health, and two defense. So you'll notice here that the health is half of average. The defense is half of average. The attack is half of average. And the cost is three quarters of average. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, we've got, and this happened a few times with the Battle Masters, the stats are not quite what we would expect, given the cost. But as we always say, it's not just about the stats here. Now, given it's a Battle Master, it's fairly standard here that they don't have a skill in bot mode. They start in bot mode and cannot be flipped and don't have a skill. So until it's KO'd and turns into an upgrade, all we've got is this just as a character and it's not good gonna be honest with you ladies and gentlemen it is frankly not good now you've always got the option to attack something like a bravery here turn it into a brave character so that it gets ko'd nice and quickly but other than that it's really just sitting there not doing very much it is a specialist and it means it's got access to all that cool stuff like field communicator which lets you play the top card of your deck when you attach it. Or if we go back to Wave 1, we've got the two multi-cards, multi-mission gear that lets you play an action, a multi-tool that lets you play an upgrade. So the specialist stuff's good. Now, we did ban swap parts the other day, but it wasn't like we really needed a six-cost specialist. Because if we go back to Wave 1, we've got a six-cost specialist. It's Prowl. And it's significantly better, both in terms of stats and in terms of skills. Although, admittedly, it really is just there for cars. It doesn't do a huge amount if you're not a car. But it also has double the attack and double the defense. And 50% more health. So, okay, it's expensive for the stats and it doesn't have a skill and we don't even love it as a specialist. So let's just flick over to the upgrade side, shall we? When it is KO'd, it doesn't go to the KO area. It turns into an upgrade and you get to attach it immediately. Though to be clear, you attach it at the end of your opponent's turn. Meaning that even though they can remove it with something like a Vaporize, they can only get rid of it after you've had a turn, which is fairly relevant here. So what does it do? Well, it's a weapon that gives you plus two attack. And plus one defense. And when you attack and flip at least two black icons, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and scraps it. Cool. I mean, straight away, this reminds me of Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime. Because we're helping with both the attack and the defense here. And if we go back to Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime, that's the one that really springs to mind as having plus two attack. And plus one defense. Makes sense because generally, at least back in wave one, the average attack was double the average defense. Attack tends to be higher than defense. So plus two attack, plus one defense makes perfect sense to me. So this is quite nice. And of course, Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime was restricted to being attached to Optimus Prime. This can go ahead and be put on absolutely anything. And then we get to the double black icon. Now... I give this warning quite a lot in my Transformers videos, but it does need to be said. We don't know that much from Wave 3. We've seen a few cards from Wave 3. But we've not seen that many. Which means that we need to wait a little bit. We, we need to chill a little bit. 
because we don't know everything we're going to be getting. And all of the cards we're looking at are going to need to be reevaluated in the context of the cards we're getting. Don't get me wrong, very much worth having a look at them now, seeing what we can deduce at this early stage. But please do bear in mind there's a lot we're going to be getting in Wave 3 that we've not actually seen yet. So what do we have in terms of black icons? We've had two cards so far revealed. Are our Disruptor Blade and Erratic Energy Grenade. They are the only two black icon cards we've seen. Now, as it stands, they are only single icons. Are we going to be getting double black icons? I would imagine so. Now, we've not got a double white icon yet, but of course, white icon, when you flip it, as long as it's the first one you flipped, you flip two extra cards while attacking or defending, double white icon wouldn't do much. Similarly, a green icon allows you to, at the end of the battle, swap a card in your hand for the card. So we don't need a double green icon, that would be superfluous. But back in Wave 1, we were introduced to both blue and orange icons. And for both of them, we got double icon cards. Each of them had one action and one upgrade. Incidentally, since we left Wave 1, we do still get double icon cards but they're all star cards nowadays and i think it's fair to assume that they will remain so going forward otherwise you could just completely fill your deck with double orange or double blue icon cards and i don't think we want that so something like mounted missiles from wave 2 which is a double orange icon card that comes in with a star cost so I think it's likely we'll get a double black icon. I should stop at this point to remind you what a black icon actually does. It's pierce. Every black icon you flip gives you pierce one. And that does add up with all of your other pierce. And if you've got a character like Blur who's lucky enough to be able to attack twice in one turn, you will get that pierce for both of the attacks, not just the first attack. So that's really, really cool. We like black icons. If we get double black icon cards, this becomes immeasurably better. If not, we've got to be relying on black icon cards and hoping we want to play them. Now, as it stands, what are the ones we've got? Our Disruptor Blade is fine, plus free attack. And when you attack, if you don't flip a black icon, you scrap this card after the battle. Now, on the one hand, this is quite good, but a bit risky. On the other hand, if, if you're going to be going ahead and playing Raider Nightstick for Black Bleam Blaster, it's a bit of a mouthful, a bit of a tongue twister, you're going to want a bunch of black icons. And if you're playing R.R. Disruptor Blade, you're going to want a bunch of black icons. So they do work very nicely together in that regard. And we're also going to be getting... Uh, one of my favorite cards we've seen from Wave 3 so far, probably my favorite upgrade we've seen, Erratic Energy Grenade. At the start of your turn, you do one damage to the upgraded character, but when it's KO'd, you do two damage to each enemy. Kind of like a one-sided photon bomb, which is frankly nuts. And that's got a black icon. One would imagine we're going to be getting other black icon cards, and I personally believe we're going to be getting some double black icons. Probably one action, one upgrade. Certainly that's what we got in wave one for blue and orange. In wave two, we only got green icons. And like I suggested earlier, or explained earlier, it just doesn't make any sense to have a double green icon card. So I'm not particularly worried that we didn't get a double green icon card. Because it would have been silly. It would have been pointless. We didn't need a double green icon card. So we didn't get one. But a double black icon giving you PS2 rather than PS1. That, ladies and gentlemen, that makes absolutely perfect sense to me. This is going to make a lot more sense as a card when we know the other stuff from Wave 3. When we know what all these black icons are going to do. Once again, it's a battle master where in bot mode I have very little love. We've got better 6 cost specialists. It doesn't have a skill. And the stats are pretty bad. But when you flick it into an upgrade, when it gets KO'd and goes into an upgrade, well now all of a sudden we got plus two attack and we got plus one defense. That's good. Your opponent scrapping a card from their hand, it tends to be the case in the Transformers TCG that your opponent gets a choice of what they scrap. But we don't have very much hand disruption as it goes at the moment. So it's really nice that we've got a little bit here. 
it basically becomes like rapid ascent. When it's when you put it on a ranged character, your opponent chews a card from the hand and scraps it. Here, you can do it potentially every time you attack with the character to whom you've attached this upgrade. So it's all right. It's pretty good as hand disruption. And the plus two attack, plus one defense is really good. Honestly, the biggest bar to this is going to be what the black icons look like. Although the usual thing here, if your opponent gets rid of this in any way, ramming speed or whatever, it goes straight to the KO area. It cannot be gotten back with stuff like reclaim. Once it leaves the field, it's gone and it's never coming back. I think there's a lot of potential here, but as I've said a couple times now in this video, it really is going to come down to what we've got in terms of black icons. So there's my opinions on Raider, Nightstick, and Black Beam Blaster, but I would very much like to know what your opinions are. So please do let me know in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. Go nuts, but do please remember to be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about Transformers and a whole bunch of other games. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.